Hey guys, good morning and welcome to another episode of Motorcyclist MC Commute. You guys know the deal. We're going to be riding to the motorcyclist office in Southern California on Honda's 2020 Africa Twin Adventure Sport ESDCT. Ooh, that is a mouthful. Today's episode is brought to you by Liqui Mali. Liqui Mali makes an entire line of lubricants for your motorcycle. Did you know that? So without further ado, let's throw the helmet on and go for a ride. All right, guys, here it is. Honda's 2020 Africa Twin Adventure Sport ESDCT. I know that's a mouthful, but this is Honda's flagship liter plus sized ADV bike. It's designed for guys and girls who want to go off the beaten path comfortably. 2020 Honda's given this thing some careful updates. Look at that front end. The nose looks nice and aggressive now. I love the LED headlights. Cornering headlights come on this Adventure Sport ES. New frame, longer stroke engine, CRF450R motocross inspired swing arm. Look at that thing. It does look like the CRF450R uh, motorbike. Rides on 21 inch front, 18 inch rear tubeless tires. This thing is all about comfort, 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 and ease of use. But enough talking about it, let's swing a leg over it and see what it's like to ride. All right, guys, here we go. A mechanical key. Thank you, Honda. No key fob. I love it. We are riding the DCT model dual clutch transmission. There is no clutch lever, there is no gear shifter. To put it in gear, you push that drive button. And now we're in gear, we're rolling. Right away, getting on this motorcycle, it's crazy how comfortable this thing is. Where other adventure touring bikes are more off-road, dirt bikey feeling. This bike very much feels like a street bike. The forward fairing is broad, tall, and wide. The handlebar has a lot of rearward sweep. You can see that right there. Foot pegs are relatively low. So if you're someone who has limited knee mobility, you will like this bike because it's going to be comfortable for you. No crazy knee contortions needed to ride this thing. Five hundred and fifty three pounds with a full tank of gas with a full six point five gallon tank of gas. This thing has one and a half gallons more fuel capacity than the standard Africa Twin. Listen to this thing go. Stroked out engine. Honda added piston stroke to this parallel twin configuration to give it more torque and they did a marvelous job this thing has a lot more mid-range a lot more bottom end a lot more acceleration DCT Honda has been making these DCT transmissions for 10 years now isn't that crazy been offering a DCT transmission for 10 years and this latest generation DCT system just when you think they can't get any better they do it is even more responsive even smoother even more adept at giving you a motorcycle riding experience without having to use the clutch or shift gears i love dct i always have loved it since it was debuted on the 2010 vfr 1200 F it just allows you to focus on riding you don't have to worry about using the clutch clutch shifting gears and I like using the clutch and shifting gears but I also like not doing it you can choose between standard drive mode which the machines in right now or hit the drive mode selector and now you're in sport mode so it's going to give you an alternate shift map that the computer decides based on your throttle input, speed travel, that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. 
the thing I like about this thing, ooh, we lead right there, is how much more responsive the DCT is now. That little millisecond where you release the clutch and give it gas, I feel like you could almost launch this motorcycle faster just because all you have to do is twist the throttle. It just responds so much more quickly than before. That little bit of lag time that the DCT previous gen DCT systems had is gone. And if you want to reduce that lag time even more, Honda has incorporated a G mode. Why do they call it G mode? Who knows? But by enabling the letter G mode, the clutch response is even shorter and it engages the the drive even faster and that's really good for folks who are riding off road and you want that immediate power delivery with zero lag g mode helps mitigate that lag but to be fair even in the standard mode it there isn't a lot of lag and we're talking milliseconds here even with the original system there was some lag but it was so small so almost immeasurable but you could still perceive it well Honda's just kind of firmed that up and literally reduced milliseconds off that so good job to those guys I like this engine it has a lot of power has a pleasing character you can't really hear the sound of the engine so much in the cockpit I mean you can hear it but it's not it doesn't have a very ferocious growl but if you're riding next to someone on an Africa twin and they give it the beans, you're going to hear that parallel twin roar. It's got a really pleasing sound. Uneven firing order, just like every other modern parallel twin made, gives it a little bit extra character, a little bit more power feel at lower RPMs. You know, the Honda 270, 450. I'm sorry, 275-40 firing order is a little bit smoother than the other guys. It almost feels like that firing order isn't uneven just because how smooth it is. We're just going to butt up here, guys, and get ahead of all these cars. We don't want to be a last man standing here. For a 553-pound bike, this thing is very easy to wield get ahead of these guys here cruise control this motorcycle has cruise control ride by wire power cruise control nonetheless and it responds very accurately a lot going on on the 6.5 inch color TFT dash display I like that it's touchscreen but of course you can't manipulate the display when you're riding you have to be at a standstill to do that oddly enough honda has this small rectangular lcd display that looks like it pulled it off the honda grom almost so it's kind of odd they would actually have two displays i don't even know why they have that a lot going on on this display a lot going on on the switch gear here on the handlebar you almost feel like you're riding Honda's Goldwing with how many buttons and switches that the switch gear offers here the the menu system and the intuitiveness of this uh, user interface isn't the best of course you're gonna be able to acclimate to it you're gonna be able to read the manual and figure it out but there are other name brand ADV bikes that have a much slicker interface much much slicker and it would have been nice if Honda would have spent more time dialing that in I'm not saying you're not gonna be able to figure it out but it's nowhere near as intuitive as some of the other brands for instance the power mode so right now we have it in power mode level one now on Honda's CBR1000RR, when they debuted it for the 2017 model year, it had the same configuration of this circle with levels one, two, three, four. And the higher the, the, the 
illumination of the sphere, the more power it has. Well, this bike is the opposite. So the lower, the more power it has. Same thing with engine brake. Right now, we are riding in engine brake mode one, which is the lowest engine braking setting. If we want the most engine braking, we go to, to level three. So for me, it's very confusing, especially having gotten acclimated on the system with Honda CBR 1000RR, which basically debuted the adjustable power modes and Honda selectable Honda selectable torque control HSTC. That's Honda nom nomenclature for traction control. So they don't want to call it traction control; they want to call it selectable torque control. So that's confusing. Setting up the system is also kind of cumbersome. It's hard to do. It takes a lot of fumbling to reach the main menu. I don't even know how to do it with the switch gear. You literally have to push this time, tap the time uh, stamp to get in the main menu, but you, have, you can only do that when you're at a stop. So definitely a little clunky. The response of the dash is also slow. It seems like the processing power of the CPU is underrated for the application or the code that the CPU is processing is too complicated and takes too long. So the electronics, as far as the interface and the actual speed of the processing power could definitely be boosted. But I do like the dark mode. The dark mode here is awesome. I love being able to select that. It's easier on my eyes. This particular Africa Twin, you can pair it to your smartphone, your Apple compatible iOS driven smartphone. Honda recently released an update so you can use Android devices on the Goldwing. They haven't applied that same update here on the Africa Twin. So this CarPlay can only be used with iOS enabled devices. It's neat. It's neat being able to work your phone through the controls, but there's no speakers. So you still need to have a Bluetooth headset to even hear anything, which is kind of a moot point at that point, because if I have a Bluetooth headset, I'm just gonna pair it to my phone and not have, have it paired to this display. So, I mean, I could see how some people would want to do that, and yeah, that would be nice, but it's just, it's creating too much steps at this point. So, again, Honda has some work to do on the slickness of the interface and the features, but still we're happy that they're they're incorporating features like the heated grips, which you can access via this FN function button, five levels of heated grip, which I like. These plastic handle guards are another nice touch. Adjustable windscreen, we have it in the lowest of its five settings. I believe there's five settings. You put it in the high setting and it does a great job of shielding the rider from the elements. I like the windscreen, but when you're riding off-road, my God, when you're riding off-road standing up, the windscreen feels like it's gonna cut off your neck. It's just right in the way of where your head is positioned, at least where my head is positioned when I'm riding. The ergonomics, while it's a very comfortable street bike with the nice deep dish seat that's wide and supportive, nice rearward sweep handlebar why it's very comfortable on the road when you're standing up on this motorcycle the ergonomics just feel plain odd it feels odd to stand up on this motorcycle there's really nothing to squeeze with your knees which reduces the stability of the motorcycle when you're riding off road you know when i ride bikes in the dirt i want to be able to squeeze them with my knees like i can on a motorbike it gives me more control this bike is very hard to do the handlebar, although it's higher, it's still too low. When I'm standing at the controls, I, I feel hunched over and I'm just not very comfortable. So, if you're a shorter rider, you're probably not gonna have that problem, but for someone who's six foot or taller, you're gonna have that problem. All right, guys, we're about to embark on the freeway. Love that DCT takes the worry out of stuff. Just automatically shifts gears. 
handling on this bike. This thing is pretty easy handling. 553 pounds, it steers very easy, it feels very neutral. These Metzler tires that the bike rolls on, 21 inch front, 18 inch rear, and geez, these tires work really good. They have a lot of grip on asphalt and they have a pretty surprising amount of grip on slick hard pack. This is a very, very good tire for Metzler. Honda also has these bikes fitted with with Bridgestone's AX41 street tire. Now you're definitely gonna wanna buy the Honda with the Metzler tires because the Metzler tires are better than the Bridgestone's in my opinion, on the road and off road. Maybe not so much on the road, but definitely off the road. Handling on this bike, this bike comes outfitted with Showa sourced electronic semi-active suspension. The fork and the shock alter damping control in real time based on um, rider control input and road conditions. We have the preload maxed out right now. So electronic preload adjustment, swipe, swipe of a button, the shock increases tension on the shock spring, adds rear ride height based on preference or uh, carrying capacity. I have it maxed out. I like a lot of preload in my bikes. It just gives it a little bit more ride height, gives it sharper handling. Also, we have adjusted the electronic suspension to the firmest setting. It has the firmest, slowest damping, which I really, really like for riding on the street. I ride the bikes generally pretty hard. I'm hard on the brakes, I'm hard on the gas, and I like a bike that has a lot of support when you're, when you're giving her the beans. Conversely, when you're riding off-road, this bike is so heavy, I like to soften everything up to help maximize grip from the tires to get that front end to bite down, to get that shock to sink down and float up the tire. You can do that very easily. We rode this motorcycle off-road uh, a couple days ago during our first ride review video shoot, and I'm very impressed with how adept this motorcycle is off-road with the electronic control. Now, yes, the bike's a little heavy. Yes, the ergonomics are kind of awkward for riding off-road, but the rider safety aids, the ABS, the traction control, they allow you to really flirt with the, with the limit of this motorcycle. And if you're not someone who's really comfortable riding off-road, with those settings, you could ride this bike relatively hard and have that control. Rear ABS can be disabled. ABS RR, it's kind of funky nomenclature. Right now, ABS is enabled. To disable it, you have to hit cancel. ABS RR cancel disables rear ABS. Again, Honda needs to do a better job with the nomenclature and the user interface and the naming conventions. Very, very odd stuff. You need to improve. But you can turn ABS off. But even with ABS enabled off-road, the ABS system is very, very responsive and it does very well on the dirt. You know, up until recently, most ABS systems couldn't, they couldn't respond fast enough or accurately enough to off-road conditions. Well, now they can, and this Honda does very well in that situation. Fuel mileage wise, we've been averaging right around 34.9 mpg. We use the right, the switch gear here, this left and right button to access that. So 35.4 mpg, not exactly the best, but not the worst either. This is a big engine, pumps out a lot of torque. It moves a lot of air. So no surprise that the fuel economy isn't the best. Modes, we have all kinds of modes here. Tour mode, urban mode, gravel mode, off-road mode, and user interface. I've set the user interface mode in two to the settings I like. Max power, least amount of engine braking, though I would like to have the most amount of engine braking because I'm riding on the street, and traction control in its lowest setting. G mode is not active, but realistically I would like it active. I like G mode active all the time and we have an ABS in the off-road setting, which we talked about is excellent. 
USB power ports here. You can charge your phone, plug in your phone, and it automatically will work with the AirPlay CarPlay software. You don't have to pair it via Bluetooth. Nice touch. We also have a 12 volt power port so you can charge your GPS. There is no mounting. I would have liked to seen a crossbar here to mount a GPS or device. Oddly enough, Honda did incorporate that. A lot of other adventure bikes are now using that simple aluminum crossbar as a means to mount your device. It would have been nice if Honda did that. But still, if you're looking for a very, very comfortable adventure touring bike, that's definitely more road bias than off-road but still can be ridden off-road especially with the high level of electronic rider safety aids and how well they're developed you have to remember honda honda dragged their feet when it came to traction control adjustable power modes they were late to the game and when they first came out with that 2017 honda cbr 1000rr the electronics on it were downright terrible. They were terrible. And Honda's really made a big jump from that original 2017 electronics package to the 2020 electronics package on this CRF 1000L Africa Twin. Even though the genre is different, the, the pro and the programming is different, the actual mechanical hardware is very similar between those motorcycles. So, good job Honda, finally refining the electronics, getting getting to, from having terrible electronics to very, very good electronics in a short period of time. Kudos to Honda. All right, guys, we're gonna take a pause right now. We're gonna be driving on the freeway for a much longer time, so we'll check in with you guys in a little bit. All right, guys, we are back. Just exiting the freeway and going to get back onto the side streets here for our final wrap up. This electronic suspension damping by show is just, it really is exquisite. It's neat how with a few swipes of the button you can transform this motorcycle from a firmly dampened, almost kind of like sport type ADV bike to uh, a conventional ADV bike with soft suspension and good grip off-road. And that's what Honda's really done with this CRF 1000L Africa Twin is basically this motorcycle is almost like a it's almost like a sport touring bike that you can take off-road. That's what this thing's all about. It's very friendly on the road. You know, it has acceptable off-road capability having the 21 inch front 18 inch rear wheel size means you can put real dirt bike tires on this thing real knobby dirt bike style tires and have extreme grip when you're going off road if you wanted to do that and this bike is a really neat bike based on those things all right guys that was a fun inaugural MC commute from our new destination. We're going to do a vote here at the end to see which destination is your guys' favorite. We'll have a couple different routes and we'll ultimately let you guys, the audience, pick which route you guys want us to use going forward. Alright guys, there it is. Honda's 2020 Africa Twin Adventure Sports ESDCT. $18,000 is what this motorcycle costs and it's a neat bike it's super comfortable handles great on road pretty okay off road the electronic wizardry on this motorcycle is no joke if you're someone who's a little bit timid when you're riding off road or even on the road and you want a bike that's going to be able to sort all the nonsense out for you and allow you to ride comfortably within your comfort zone this bike is a good option for that. All right, guys, let's do some Q&A real quick. Answer some questions you guys have straight to the top. Good for daily or touring? This bike is good for daily riding and touring. Excellent for both. Would you commute on it every day? 
Well, from where I live in Vista, California to Irvine, California, I would definitely commute on this bike every day. It is super comfortable. It is kind of fun to ride. And the price isn't bad either for what you get. Compared to the 790R and 850 GSA, uh, those bikes are in a totally different class. I mean, not only in terms of engine size, but this is a big street bike. Those bikes, namely the 790R, is a dirt bike. So totally different bikes. If you're going to ride off-road, you want the 790R. If you're going to ride on the street, you want this thing. How does this compare to the new V-Strom 1050 XT? I love the 1050 XT, but this thing is just much more of a mature bike. It's more comfortable, it's bigger. You know, in standard base configuration, the price isn't that much different. I really love that Suzuki V-Twin though. Great question, guys. How comfortable is that seat? The seat is unbelievable. Look at it, it's a street bike seat. Super deep dish, very supportive. Very comfortable. Look at the passenger accommodations too. Excellent. All right, guys. This or a BMW R1250 GSA. I'm a Beamer guy, so I'd buy the Beamer, no doubt. But this bike is very excellent. You get a lot for your money. I mean, think about that. $18,000 is a lot less expensive than a GSA bike. And you get everything. So keep that in mind. All right, guys. That's a wrap from this MC Commute. If you like this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. Leave us a comment. Make sure to check out our written article on MotorcyclistOnline.com. And stay tuned for another MC Commute route. We're going to have you guys vote for which one is the best. So thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you next time.